Hello, welcome to Café Rollist, uh, where we uh, pray to the gods of the machine so uh, they favor us with all the technical bits. And I got two great technicians, I could say, with me today. Could you introduce yeah. yourself? Well, John, you go first, ladies first. Okay, I'm a lady. I'm a lady today, people. Uh, I am Janet from World Anvil, and I'm the one that does everything that is not coding on World Anvil. So the social media, the videos, the tutorials, I pay the bills, I answer the emails, and I, uh, I make coffee. <laughs> really? A lot of coffee. Is that how you're going to introduce yourself? Yes. Okay. I would say she also does all the content we do, first of all. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm Dimitris. I am the other half of World Anvil. I am a developer by trade and a designer, and I am the person who is not doing the coding and leading to the design behind World Anvil. Awesome. Uh, I've got two ice-breaking questions, which are... Uh, so, what's your routine at the moment? Uh, has it changed a lot with uh, COVID-19? That is very depressing. I mean... But the answer is absolutely no, because we are in self... Uh, quarantine. Quarantine anyway, because we don't have any time to go out. Okay, now, there is some that changed. We used to be going to the cinema once every two weeks. Now we don't. That is the actual change <laughs> for us. So, so you, you're saving a little bit of money, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like. We also can't order a uh, pizza anymore because all the good pizza, pizza places are closed. That's the, uh, been the other major change to our routine since uh, the quarantine. And uh, yeah, otherwise we stay in our house. We work a hell of a lot. We like we hang out with our community who are friggin' amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, we occasionally we world build. It's quite nice. <laughs> Every Sunday, well, two hours. I, my schedule. I assume then your your answer to my second question is gonna be quite short too. Uh, did you pick up any new skill, hobby, or anything new as part of uh, COVID nineteen? Uh? We picked up COVID nineteen as part of COVID nineteen actually. Yeah, that was a new um, hobby. It lasts about two weeks, and now I have a cough that remained. But apart from a that, coughing hobby, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, so, so you um, did get it. Or? We yes. did get it. Uh, in the very oh. beginning, in fact, it was one of the. Yeah. Um, but we had it very minor. We were very lucky. Um, I, not everybody is so lucky. So we were very, very tired and quite sick. And we lost like a week and a half of work. But apart from that, we're fine. We yeah. were fine. You still have a bit of cough. Yeah. But apart from that, yeah, it was literally, it wasn't that such a, uh, it was a very mild case. I'm guessing that the only thing we experienced is the fact that we were trying to work and we we're literally unable to focus because we were feeling absolutely tired. You know how it is when you go out for the night like, not that I haven't done it for years, but when you go out for the night and you drink a lot and you woke up the next day and you're actually feeling your whole body just saying no. That's exactly how you feel when you have COVID in, as a mild case. Like, nope, not worn at work today. Just sit on the couch, rest, chill. That's pretty much all you can do. Yeah. Did you lose your sense of smell and taste? Because some people describe yeah, I did. You did? I did. I'm also the one that does all the cooking, so that was not, not the best thing. It isn't. Uh, <laughs> not that bad. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, I did, as I mentioned to you earlier, uh, via TikTok, Dimitris, which is a weird place to have a conversation. Yeah, uh, it was a hilarious <laughs> conversation. <laughs> I did mention to you that uh, what I picked up as part of COVID-19 was uh, World Anvil. Finally, I had a go at it because we started a campaign with uh, online with my very first, the very first people I ever played with back uh, in Belgium. And uh, yeah, it's a it's it's a campaign written by French designers uh, initially for Delta Green and the contemporary Call of Duty, and they rewritten re it to move it back to re-release it with their own system and uh, move it back to 2016. So Donald Trump just okay. So essentially, it's a it's a refurbishment of the campaign essentially. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so so I guess the yeah the. The Call of Tulu stuff is going to be melded with political issues and, and things like that. But yeah, I thought it was would be helpful for the group since there would be a lot of investigation and we are FBI agents, so we should have a database of some kind that we develop our own database. And by our own, I mean mine, because I, it's mostly me <laughs> using <laughs> World Anvil and trying to convince... Uh, my uh, Luddite, not Luddist, but Luddite... Uh, co-players to to use it a bit but yeah they, they were impressed although they, they don't speak english much 
But uh, yeah, it's a it's a fantastic tool. Have you seen a lot of people like me joining the the fold of World Anvil uh, since the quarantine? It was started? very interesting. In fact, it was a very interesting period for World Anvil since COVID started. First of all, you could literally track with the chains where COVID was spread because you saw when COVID started to actually actually spread in a country and people start to quarantine their homes sales and registrations from that country will will spike it was very very interesting and also very interesting enough uh, sales slowly fell as necessarily the quarantine went further in the country so essentially like for example if you're in quarantine the first day you need something to do so you're going to go to Danville, but after 15 days people who come because they know that their salary is actually at stake kind of stop it, it, it's it's so beautiful like beautiful like in terms of graphs actually you can actually track the course of the virus through the registrations and cancellations in London rule. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, it is fair to say that the website has never been busier. Our numbers are extremely... Whoa, what did you do there? I don't know. Um, our numbers have been crazy on the website right now. So, like, clearly everybody is world building, you know? It's, it's, yeah. um, it's awesome, actually. And, uh, yeah, it's a very good hobby for quarantine because you can just <laughs> sit in your house and world build and then jump on the Discord server and, you know, share your ideas with other people and get inspired and then go back and work with some more. Uh, funnily enough, I am today working on the next quick guide. I have these um, sort of quick guide videos. Since you've been using World Anvil, you'll have seen my silly face doing the quick guide videos. There are essentially tutorials for each feature. And the feature we're doing today is the digital storyteller screen, um, yeah. which I wish we had the, uh, the guide out for a month ago when COVID hit. <laughs> um, but we had to make some little tweaks to the DSTS before it was ready to do the, um, the video of. And uh, essentially what that is, is it's your GM screen, but tailored for your own homebrew world. So I'm really looking forward to getting this quick guide out today. So more people see the extent to which you can use World Anvil for your campaign if you want to, essentially. In or out of the session. Yeah, fact, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's got a really cool mechanic where you can share a live screen with your players even if they are not on World Anvil. So you can give them a URL and they'll just see a feed of stuff that you're sharing with them and a dice log and they can see bits of the party and the other characters if you want them to. Um, and they don't even have to be on World Anvil. Because so, the Luddites are Because everywhere. the Luddites, right, exactly. <laughs> For every player who's like, oh my God, this is the best thing. I could do so much with my character and write journals. There's a player who's like, I just want to play on paper and I don't mind looking at things that you show me on a screen. Well, to be fair, uh, I'm... I'm, uh, what's the word? Uh, I'm into uh, computer softwares and so on, but it's kind of this uh, uh, eternal challenge of either you have a simple tool who doesn't do much, but it's simple to grapple, or you got a tool who can do an amazing number of things, but it becomes extremely, extremely complex. Uh, yeah. And that was one of the things. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. That was actually one of the things that we have we had to sit down and think about when we started World Anvil. Because in the beginning we were like, we can do either something streamlined, like Twitter, but for campaign management, it's like you know the minimum version kind of thing, or we can create the ultimate tool set with everything in there. And we decided to go for the second one, fully understand that understanding that of course that will mean a harder way, a harder time to go into the tool. Yeah. And it's also hard the time to teach the tool, but Janet's contribution to that was actually very important because since Janet started doing these videos, the requests and questions went from 100 a month to two, which really says a lot about the fact that like people at least see the videos. We have also uh, some amazing people from the community that are building their own, essentially, gold Anvil codex of documentation, effectively, and they they help so much. But yes, gold Anvil is a complicated tool we never said no, it won't no, no, be no, 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 no. and that's that's actually the thing it's not a complicated tool it's a whole toolbox yes that's, that's actually what it is it's like you open your toolbox the hammer doesn't work like the spanner which doesn't work like the spirit level right they're each different tools that do a different job and that's the problem when people go into world anvil they're like oh it's a tool for world building i'm like no 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 it's 18 tools for world building you will want them all they all work a bit different there is a universal logic so it's like getting people into that and understanding that yes, this is this is a hammer and this is the spanner and this is the timeline and this is the map, 
And it starts to actually be a bit more like that. Essentially, yeah. lately, we have seen that there are people that are saying, I'm using Old Danville just for the maps, or I'm mm-hmm. using Old Danville to put to my timelines. Or, for example, for many of them, actually, is I use Old Danville to, in fact, make money out of my content, which is amazing because they use everything plus the most advanced features, and they manage to actually make it a living out of it in many cases, which is amazing. Yeah, it's it's quite... I mean, the the way I approach it with the, the players and the Game Master, because I'm doing the work for, for both of them, of, I, mean, I mean, both of them, the, the two... Uh, I'm not the Game Master, but I'm doing the work for the Game Master, is that I told them, so you're going to use just hero profile. I think it's a, it's a feature... Yeah. It, it's, it's a feature which is limiting features, but it, at, le- at least it made things slightly simpler to have something I could tell to the player, okay, you, you sign up for this, you don't sign up for world builder, you sign up for hero. So this way the, the tool is limited to a very basic things, but at least they don't get lost and then they can grow they can grow to get used to these and start to really enjoy the tool and then I can start teaching them the, the game master tool if they want to, to feed on the wiki. Yeah. Uh, the the thing I want to do at the moment is so now I actually posted I think it was yesterday on the London RPG community Discord saying I might relaunch my Star Wars campaign, which has been uh, drifting away a bit, uh, but I would just specifically would like players who are into World Anvil because uh, it would be nice as a group to do it. And also, I'd be curious to, to get the... Because at, first, at some point, I was like, okay, I get this now. I get the tool. And then I realized, oh, wait, that's the world building. There's a campaign management tool also, which I need <laughs> to use to create the session so the players can feed their journals, so they, they list it so automatically in the sessions and so on. And the, the campaign so tools... I will say, I just did a quick guide for the campaigns like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. So there is now a video that literally, I think it's in 11 minutes, it walks you through the entire <laughs> how to make a campaign, what the different screens within the interface will let you do, and you'll just know how to use it. So in 11 minutes, you can go from, I don't know how to make, make a campaign, to I now have a campaign on World Anvil. Amazing. So it's there, it's on the campaign's interface, and the video that I'm making today goes from I've created a campaign to I know how the complete DSTS works, the complete uh, storyteller screen works, yeah. and I have played and finished a session. Out of curiosity, Callum, are you playing uh, Star Trek Adventures as a game? Like these are the system you're using? Sorry, what? So. Oh, is it Star Wars you're playing? Star or Star Wars, yeah. Star Wars, right? So the the one I'm playing, uh, and I did the World Anvil for, it's uh, Chronic Zublié. So it's a system which, as far as I know, doesn't have an English version. It's a, but it's listed in some of your premium. I know. Lists. I was about to say. I know it's listed because I know who actually got there as well. I mean, it's a <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but but it doesn't have the 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 character sheets features and so on, which I, I don't need at the moment to be honest, and especially since it's a contemporary version because the the original version of the game is a medieval fantasy setting as far as I know, but the other game I want to run is Star Wars, but it's the old Star Wars, it's the D six system, so I, I don't. The D six one. We actually have a sheet for that. Oh, yeah, cool. That one yes, because we have. Yeah. Well, Star Wars the D6 uh, system because we had actually an amazing dude, um, Cooper Wolfie, yeah, uh, who loves the system. So he decided I'm gonna make a sheet for it, and that's how most of the sheets are creating all done. We are trying to, you know, do, make them as a team, but most of them are done by people like Tillers, who's actually right now in the chat. Hello, hey. Tillers. Hello, Tillers. Uh, Fellow fan of D6. <laughs> he's not actually Tillers. He's not the one who made the D6. Tillers oh, did sorry. another like a thousand. He's doing Coriolis. He will be doing Star Trek Adventures. He will be doing Savage Worlds. He already did like some. Like, also, he did the Strange and Numenera, and um, you know, like the whole system there. Yeah, Tillers is a is a sheet making machine. Yes, <laughs> he's amazing. But yeah, uh, we are trying to do as many as we can. But of course, you have to understand that we have to always try to accommodate the, pe- the, the, most, people. the most people. So exactly. we do the really big ones. Like we have a, a big D and D five E sheet. We have Pathfinder one. Pathfinder, Pathfinder two, two is on the way. Coming. Because these are these are the most requested ones, and those are the ones that we have to prioritize as the World Anvil team. But that means that heroes like Tillers, who are like, I want a sheet for that, I'm just going to make it. Or even, I want to make sheets. Which sheets shall I make? Which is like the most helpful question in the world for us. Indeed. Yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, it really is a community project. 
um, and it's amazing. Yeah, I need to, to thank Riverfang13, who was uh, among the people who were very helpful on the Discord when I was asking questions about, oh, do I do this? Riverfang is amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, Riverfang is amazing. And the Anvil assistants that hang out in the help channel, there's so many of them. So I always say this on, the, on, on everywhere. If you need help, go to the Discord, because we have people who haunt the help channel looking for people to help. I don't know another community like that. We are so lucky. We are, yeah, because effectively for the amount of people we have, we will need to have a team like of 20 people to be able to cover all these health questions. And the community is freaking amazing. Yeah. Every step of the way since actually we started, we always had people who will mount the channels and will just help people out. Yeah, exactly. Like and Lenya like, and like, yeah, yeah, so many people. It's got a bit less now that we have tutorial videos, but still, you know, there's one of the questions I get asked most frequently is how do I delete something? And I'm like, I show you in every tutorial video, but people are missing this clearly. <laughs> because it's um, a thing that you, you don't care about until, until you, you do. Need it. Right, and, exactly. and the reason that is hidden, that some people don't understand, I hide the delete buttons. Not, I mean, not hide, like I said, like, you know, you have to go to a, a, a quest, but you know, it's not like right in your face because simply enough, people tend to push them by mistake. And then I had so many people coming to me and saying, I, I have deleted my, my entire mom. campaign. Yes, and I was like, "Oh man!" Like some of them, I can, I can, I can get back for some minutes afterwards. It happens, but most of them would be gone. So that's why they are hidden. It's like something that people don't think about. Yeah, you, you know? want that button in a cupboard, which you need to open with a key, exactly. and then it's exactly. behind a plastic <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> then you, yes. This is what we need for. So the reason we were a little bit late to come live was because uh, Dimitri's computer needs like a cap on the off button because he accidentally presses it with the the, the arm of his chair sometimes. Yeah, it's you need like the, all these things have in the old uh, like fighter, fighter jet exactly to open up the release and then click the button because and that's how in fact the delete button will keep in the list work now. Yeah, that's how the delete button on World Anvil works. That and was the idea. Like, you have to click something and then it expands and it's there. But otherwise, you can't see it because if people are on touch screens, especially if they're just scrolling, <laughs> you you don't you, you wouldn't believe how easy it is to accidentally click something on the touch screen. Yeah, yeah no. So uh, yeah, we we put the quick release container in, so it's it's just like protected. It was even worse because at some point people uh, used to buy memberships by well, not buy upgrade, in fact, memberships. Sorry. You had a Sorry. Yeah. So because we had, we had the one click update, which is really helpful and everybody likes it until they did it by mistake and they were like, oh crap, kind of thing. You know what I mean? So we actually had to do that as well. They're saying like, upgrade and they just, are you sure you want to upgrade if you do that on purpose? <laughs> So beyond uh, improving your on-off button on your desktop, what are the sort of projects and improvements you? I'm sure you have plenty in stores uh, for Word Anvil. <laughs> so if um, just to note, if anybody wants to see all of these, they can see them on the blog. I am finding the URL for that specific blog right now because we've got so okay. many questions. I, I, about this. Until you find them, I'll tell you actually what's happening right now. So one of the things that we wanted to really make sure, and it's currently being developed, probably it's going to be released next week, uh, is the new articles management interface, which allows you to, in fact, manage your articles, move them into categories, create them, or organize them, tag them, whatever other might, or, or that is, super quickly. Like, people said about 200% faster at least than it used to be, which is great, because what we found out that is that the system we had was okay, as long as we have 100 articles. Now we have worlds that have 3.5 thousand articles wow. in average. Like we have worlds with 7,000 and 8,000 articles. Yeah, which sounds terrible, but it's actually amazing because these people actually are doing a lot of work. We have people who work with 13 writers and they write whole worlds. Another guy came to me yesterday and was like, I have a problem with this system. And I told him, by the way, it's being updated right now, but I have a problem because I have 750 articles just for my items without my monster, which we have another 5,000. I was like, hmm, yes, I can see your predicament there. Don't worry, it will be fit. Yes, that's going to be a problem very soon. <laughs> people are uh, people are creative. And people we've seen actually a lot lately, more than when we started, start to put a lot of collaborative worlds. Like we started with some people that were actually like a team of like two people, maybe three people. Now we see people who go ahead and say, I am the creator and I have another 13 DMs or 13 creators of DMs, and we all work together. We have, for example, a, a new team now called Starful. 
Starfall is a team of 16 people, and they, if I remember correctly, and they have uh, illustrators and writers and for, uh, for um, pros and rule makers, essentially, and they create the world. They want to create an RPG, and then they want to create a game. But they said, you know what? Well, that will be the best place for them to, in fact, start the Bible, a place that everything they're going to be doing around this universe will have a common place. So we have actually massive teams that are working together, which is amazing. Well, I mean, yeah, what we haven't mentioned is we have um, Apocalypse 333 working there as well. Yes, of course. Yeah. So um, Dennis Dyack, who made Legend of Cain, his uh, computer studio is, is using World Anvil for their products as well. So their new MMORPG that's going to be released in 2021 that's all being built on World Anvil right now. Like all the world building behind that. So yeah, we have some massive teams on there and some really big projects. It's amazing. And a lot of small DMs, which is also yeah, very exactly. fine. Exactly. And yeah. a lot of authors as well. I know it's I know this is a role play space, I'm not supposed to talk about writers, but we have so many writers on World Anvil that it's awesome. Janet is representing the writer. Representing sorry. the writers. I mean it's an amazing tool uh, for, for writers as well. I I, I can imagine that uh, if I was developing my own, I'm developing a game. Even even developing a game which is settingless, I can see how I could use the tool to organize the elements together rather than use. I, I dabbled for a while with TiddlyWiki and all the uh, wiki, make your own wiki tools, but they, they don't have as many features. So when you have the interface and the tool like World Anvil, you, you definitely could use it. To be honest, sometimes I'm using tools like that, and I've seen some professional versions, but they, they were very dreary and uh, and heavy. The, the interface was not very good. But even in my work, you know, networking and dealing with stuff or keeping track of projects we worked on as, as architects and looking for pictures, I, I always find it so ridiculous. You got these big engineering and consultancy practice, and they still use they just use folders and folders name. And the uh, and the horrible yeah. moment is always a moment when someone said, "Oh, we're gonna make up a, a folder structure," and you end up with 100 empty folders in all your projects because you're not doing the same as Bob at the end of the or Jessica at the end of the alley, who are on-site architects. Why what you're doing is urban design is unrelated, but yeah, having system with tags and so on, it's it's so handy and you got everything in there. You got location, places, individuals. You, you could use that f to keep track of your network, your professional network, if you wanted. I will actually answer to you what, how else you can use it and how people are using it. But before that, I would like to say that we also have the new timelines coming out, which will be a massive update. We create a system that will allow you to track everything that's happened to the world, like not only events, but when people uh, were, were born, when they died, when organizations were created and they were dissolved, oh, to cool. see all of them in in also to see them essentially in the map itself, to actually see where the events happen in the map while you're exploring the timeline. And then we have the favorite feature for Janet, which is the Scribes update, which is in fact an update that will be specifically designed for writers. It will be a way for the writers to write their stories beside their worlds and also publish their stories through World Anvil. So not just a, as a world article, but as actually prose that goes hand in hand with your world. I have to say though, if you have your World of World Anvil and you're trying to turn it into a setting PDF or a setting book, the scribes is going to be very, very useful yes. as well because you'll be able to have quick access to everything um, and then write long form text, essentially, yeah. which is exactly what authors need to do as well. So in terms of people using it for different things, first of all, we have archeologists who use it to uh, put information and data from archaeological uh, excavations into World Anvil because it has maps, it has timelines, and it has articles. And you know what, if you think about it, that's actually the perfect tool if you want to document history of something, kind of thing, and the story goes. We have, in fact, companies, I know for a fact because at some point somebody reported a bug and I had to go fix it for them, so they have given me access to private because I don't know that you know at Calum, but if something is private, we cannot see it, only they can see it. So I had to have access in order to see them. So some, at some point I went somebody and he had a company who is doing um, metallic, um, how do you call it? iron ribs, steel ribs oh, yeah. uh, how do you for construction. Yeah. And they were using it to show to their clients, the customers, the scaffolding they were creating. So they really had maps with definitions effectively of how the scaffolding will work so they and, the, and the, the timeline of the project. And I was like, 
Jesus Christ, that's not RPG. That's a fr- this is engineering. <laughs> like that's that's insane. <laughs> I've also been working with a professor of linguistics at Manchester University who's using it for a project to showcase uh, linguistic diversification and this kind of stuff. Again, using the maps features. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of applications for it outside of um, outside of writing and RPGs. Yeah. Well. So it's been very interesting. We have been asked a lot of times to create a professional, like, stripped down version, but honestly, we hardly have time to maintain this one. We have so many things coming already, so it's going to be hard. So I, I just uh, need to wave before before she goes uh, to River Fang 13 because she visited oh, really us in fine. the chat room. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I was wondering about that. So, yeah, there's two things there. The first thing is so if people use it for developing a, well, not only a it's already can be already an issue, but developing, let's say, a writer their, their novel. Uh, but if you're a video game company or even a steel construction company, I can imagine that that raises the stakes in terms of uh, security uh, of of information. And uh, honestly, at this point, because yeah. we were asked that a lot, and in the biggest and most important conversation we had actually was with Apocalypse Three. Because they are a professional, massive, multi-million investment company, like the, the, like a games company, and we they go to security specialists. They came to ask questions, specifically and test the system, and they say, "Yeah, it is comparable to anything like, for example, Jira, which is in fact an industry standard." And I was like, "Okay, I mean, I know, I mean, that's how I designed it because you know what? You think of it from the industry perspective. I think of it." from the intellectual property perspective of creators who create unique content for their worlds. If you don't put security in something like that, which is actually your life's work for some people, where will you? And it's worth mentioning, um, we had uh, an author who moved to us, uh, Jamie from Wanted Hero. And one of the things that he liked so much about World Anvil was that he had had from his own personal website, a giant catastrophe um, again, this was his own personal website where he'd lost everything. Wow. He lost huge amounts of um, world building like information. Sh- 20 years of 20 world years building, of work yeah. or something from his own personal website. And so when he <laughs> came to World Anvil, he was like, this is not going to happen, right? And we were like, no, it's not going to happen. We have backups and backups. You know, and we we keep everything safe for that reason because you, you don't want to lose an hour of work, let alone 20 years of work. Um, and it has to be safe because this is the kind of stuff that that is massively important to individual creators, let Indeed. alone, you know, big companies. And we, we have companies working with us now, but it's always been that way because do you know what? Nobody wants to lose like their that. work. Exactly. We're world builders as well. We don't want to lose our work. We, we do our work, work. Exactly, yeah. exactly. My whole book is in there. I have three books in there. Um, I don't want to lose them. You know, it's, it's important to us as well. And so... We know how important it is for anyone using it. It's it's the eat your own dog food kind of dogma because Absolutely. we are using it, and if we are, if you, if we put our our belief and our, our like essentially um, stake essentially on the project, you should know that you know it's definitely going to work. It's not even a question. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's funny also, uh, I mentioned that I was only starting to look into the campaign uh, tools. Uh, it's I find it very. First of all, I thought it was cool that you could put Spotify links. And I need to ask London RPG community to include in their world and villa about Kentas some links to the episodes I recorded in their world. Uh, so that's gonna be that might be interesting. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, I thought it was cool that when you use campaign tools, you can see a number of things which are there for streamers. Yeah. So and it, it will only become better, in fact, because we want to focus on that. The, uh, there is after all these things we talked about. There is an iteration, in fact, which is specifically designed for the DSTS and will definitely have about like seven major features I can think of, which are going to be for streamers only, including, for example, something we have been thinking for a long time, which is going to be an API that will allow you to create, in fact, to get the overlay for streaming online, to get the characters from, from World Dumbbell to show on your stream or to link to your world or to link to the campaign session kind of thing. So there are so many more coming. It's just that we are just two people. With, exactly. a, with the help from outside, I think I will give some people who are helping us right now. But it's just too much. It's, yeah. the, it's a big tool set, okay? And we have to build everything and make it better. The, <laughs> other, the other thing we're really looking forward to, and um, we have an API coming, which is just the first step of that, 
yeah. is looking towards moving to um, integrations with other companies as well. So one of the things we're asked for a lot is why can't we have either a World Anvil BTT or World Anvil accessible via a BTT? So that's one of the things that we're looking at. We're also, um, there have been some questions around the and beyond and we are looking at hopefully solving some things and creating useful user workflows there basically so people can get access to what they want and do what they want because that's what we're all about callum's jumping out the window don't go away callum. Don't jump out the window stay with us callum that's just too much <laughs> no i had the truck uh making a lot of noise in the street so although the weather is nice I had to close the window Wow, that, that's so much stuff. I mean, just hearing about it is tiring. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. There's always a lot going on at Anvil. I'm HQ. not even kidding. We haven't even said half of what the uh, roadmap is for the next year. Yeah. There is a lot more. And this is only the big ones, not the small ones. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's just the little fixes and tweaks. <laughs> Funnily enough, those little fixes and tweaks are sometimes as powerful as the yeah. big features. It's amazing. Like the other day, we actually created the system that allows people to be able to hide things I made it in a day because yeah. somebody challenged me a little bit. It was like, said, I'm, I can't believe you cannot, you don't hear that already. I was like, hmm. I slept on it and I was very stressed because I was like, yes, that's very important. That's going to be very useful for people to be able to essentially show an article but hide sections from it effectively. And I woke up with the idea and it took me eight hours straight working literally from like eight o'clock, five o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the evening. But at the end we had it and it was never scheduled. And people were like really now upgrading and using it probably more than many other features in Gold Downville, just so they can actually hide things and slowly show them to their players from a specific article. It's, yeah, that was one of the questions from uh, the Game Master for or, um, uh, Greenberg Legacy, it's called actually, the campaign. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, one of his players, uh, actually his wife, uh, they were, it's funny because playing with that group, uh, I changed countries, I listened to a lot of advice about tabletop role-playing, and this kind of a culture shock going back to what they were doing in the late 90s because they, they have not moved on. And I mean, if they're having fun, it's right. But they, they're also still very competitive uh, in the way they, they play. So it was important for, for, his, for one of the players to keep her secrets. And the, the last session, we spent a lot of time going in and out of a... Um, I don't even have a word in English for that. In French, we call that aparté. So it's a, a, a side discussion. That's what you take one of the players and you take that person to another room to have a discussion which the other cannot hear. Okay, so yeah. you have like a real one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, one-on-one. -on -one. And, uh, and we had that the whole evening. So it was fine because it was just 10 minute bit, but it was just conversation with our parents at our graduation of the FBI. And I was like, I... We don't care, you know. It would be so weird if we were looking yeah. at watching a show and suddenly we follow the character of Tyrion and Sansa went off, she's having a conversation and you're just like, I don't know what's going on over there. I mean, when it's important, I get it. But yeah, and they were asking for ways to, to keep secrets from me. And I, I was like, look, there, there seems to be tools for that, but you're going to need to do it <laughs> yourself with World Anvil because I cannot look into it and I yeah of course you cannot look out it, and I, say, I was like you know i don't care I, I don't care if i see somebody's secret i'm not gonna i don't know i don't even know what they're trying to hide because it's, it's a co cooperative campaign it's not even vampire masquerade or something like that i think that in most cases it's kind of a little bit about the player feeling special yeah. like yeah. secrets that are given to a player make them kind of having their own kind of like roadmap in the whole campaign and have a little bit of like a personal personal time with them of course that's an extreme case that you discussed here because essentially if like half the session is derailed for somebody's personal secret then it's kind of like counterproductive for the rest of the people but generally speaking we've solved that in gold Army by simply allowing people to assign subscriber groups to who is seeing what in an article. And as simple as that, for example, you might say that uh, in that article about, for example, Callum, I might know Callum is in fact an architect, but somebody who has the secret uh, accessibility, he might like access, he might know also that Callum, for example, is superhero. a superhero, exactly. And it's very interesting actually, because that way it takes away all of these things. Uh, it takes away all the uh, like 
going back and forth. You, you read the same articles, but you see different things in it. Exactly. There's a lot of functionality as well for players to give secrets only to the GM. So in journals, yeah. for example, you can, when, once you've done a session as a character, you can write up a journal of like, <laughs> what happened? I always do them in the character voice because I'm obsessive, but it can just be notes if that's more useful for you. And then there's a little box at the bottom where anyone, even a free player, uh, a free user can write in things that only the game master will see and that none of the other players in the campaign will see. Now, that's really, really useful, but I can't imagine why you would want to keep secrets about your character from the GM. Because at the end of the day, they're the ones that are going to want to get, they're, they're gonna, the ones that are going to make things work for the campaign, right? It's such a big secret even the whole doesn't know about right, it. Right, exactly. <laughs> Well, I can see you could use it. I mean, I would be dreaming of, I see, there's this joke, uh, this meme on, almost uh, uh, on social media, which says your your goal as a podcaster is to have a someone create a Wikipedia entry on, under your name. Yeah. But uh, yeah. It's when... true. I mean, I'm still waiting for someone to create a whole Danville article on Wikipedia. I think I would probably <laughs> create a very big personal success when a whole Danville has a Wikipedia article. But sometimes like, you, you know, got, it's, you it's, got, I know what you mean though, it's a, it's a thing, yeah. So, sometimes you got all uh, wikis and World Anvil database uh, about shows. So yeah, that would be a dream for the Race podcast to have someone. I'm not saying that uh, for guess, any reason, if someone wants to start a Wikipedia about the uh, Race podcast. We but, do appear on Wikipedia as one of the any winners. There we are. 2019, nice. eight and a gold. Well done, Bill. <laughs> but we don't have our own article yet. Well, you just need to click on the name and uh, create an entry. Then uh, it's it's like uh, uh, quote, quote, quote needed. I don't think it counts if we make it. <laughs> no, I've done. Yeah, I think the recognition comes from somebody else taking the time uh, because it does take time. I mean, uh, we do have, in fact, someone in the community who is working for um, the translation of Wikipedia in uh, Catalan. Yeah, and. He was telling us that, in fact, it is quite difficult. Like, it, it takes a lot of iterations and careful planning to, in fact, put an article in Wikipedia because people have to check it and have to approve it and it has to be essentially censor checked and have proper references and things like that. It's not like, yeah, let's just create an article kind of thing. Yeah, I, I think it's also a question of the, the people writing them, they got uh, not, not actual credit, but, you know, credit like, like a writer would have because they are regular contributors so that they acquire um, a, a sort of renown and maybe an actual place in some hierarchy to say okay this thing is worthy of of wikipedia and yeah. they trusted uh, with this sort of thing it's a whole world it's quite fascinating i remember some some articles about that explaining why it was still a reli reliable source regard despite uh, the Michael Scott thing, it's uh, its the, the best source of information because anyone can write anything. It's its not exactly like that. No, <sighs> it's not. It is still a very worthy endeavor. I think that it might not be acad an academic library, but in many cases, it gives information that people wouldn't have 10 years ago, 15 years ago, in their hands really quickly. And I think that actually makes it a very important thing. I mean, talking about Wikipedia, interesting enough for the whole family, but honestly, Wikipedia is kind of a gold dumbbell for the world. Yeah. I'll put that way. So it's like the actual gold <laughs> gold <laughs> like One of the pieces of advice that we give, but also one of the pieces of advice that uh, Trent Hergenreder gives, who is a professor of world building at Rochester Institute of Technology in New York, is look at how a Wikipedia article is put together and that will give you some information about what should be in your, in your world building, world articles, building articles, well. articles. It's true. And what kind of things you should make articles for, as opposed to what kind of things you shouldn't make articles for. And and yeah, what should you use the sideboard bar for? This kind of information. It's uh yeah, it's very interesting the parallels there. And that makes sense, I guess. So uh, I would love to go on and on chatting with you, but I promise oh. you that I would free you by quarter to to three, Janet. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I, I have another meeting. Exactly. John, he's a meeting at three. I have to get this video out. <laughs> and I have three meetings as well after that, which is really fun. Do you have anything to plug or your your thought of the moment you'd like to share before you go? Um. Well, all I have to say, my, from my side, all I have to say is that if you're a game master and right now you are stuck at home, this is the perfect time for you to prepare for your next campaign. 
do it in whole Danville, do it wherever you want, whatever it makes you feel uh, like better about yourself and better about the thing that you're doing. But make sure that you actually do it right now because this is going to be the time that you need to create something beautiful for your players when things calm down. Yeah, and I would also add that a lot of the tools in there, like the digital storyteller screen and the ability to make campaigns, they're all free tools. So there are paid tools in World Anvil. It's, a, it's what's called a freemium service. But a lot of what is free, like, advan uh, like um, interactive maps and timelines and the campaigns interface and the digital storyteller screen, that's the good stuff that you need to put together a campaign. So if you're on the fence, just go and make an account and explore. You'll see my ridiculous face a lot. explaining every single tool. And we have so much support for you in the Discord I as mean, well. I mean, that's, so, al that's already so much. You don't have to pay to have Janet's face telling you how things are done. So that's already a, a <laughs> big thing for free. I'm the one who's paying. It's okay. In blur. <laughs> 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 no, no, so I would, yeah, just we, we have an amazing community. So if nothing else, come join the community because they're phenomenal. You should create you a can tool. Learn. You should create a tool like... Uh, which it would be, you would have to pay for it, but it would be a Janet like uh, the paperclip in Windows. The paperclip. <laughs> <bottom right. laughs> so, funnily enough, I was just um, I was just editing a video, and I, I'm down at the bottom right hand side, very very small, so sort of this size, and I was like, "Do you look awfully like a paperclip down there?" <laughs> <laughs> Explaining what's happening on the screen. <laughs> Terrifying. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Well. Uh, thank you both. Dimitris, anything to add? No, thank you very much for having us, Callum. It was really nice, and it was really nice to talk to you. No, yeah. we missed you. And yeah, congratulations, yeah. and congratulations for 10,000 followers in TikTok, if I remember correctly. Oh, uh, 1,000 followers on TikTok. 1,000 yeah. followers, yeah, still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need to get back at TikToking at the moment. I'm a bit blue. but uh, yeah, it's... Um... It doesn't help that we are in home stack, like, right? I mean, it doesn't... <laughs> Yeah, it's the main thing is the nursery. When once the nursery is open again, uh, our, our life will re resume a, a some kind of normalcy <laughs> and and comfort, and uh, that will be that will be amazing. I love my son, but uh, wow, uh, I mean, yeah, at the moment it's all the posts of people. Oh, if by the end of the self-containment uh, you have done a, you have not done a, a side hustle, learn a new instrument, and uh, this and that it's like yeah you 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 don't have a child mate <laughs> you should just shut up, <laughs> shut we, up. Have a we have a whole damn bill. we have an anvil but it does wake us up in the middle of the night so yes. i think that's it's a fair comparison yeah no i mean it's it's not you it's uh, some politicians tweeting who should just shut up like uh, a yeah, lot of politicians pretty much on that joyous note thank you so much for visiting us and uh, yeah, I look Thank forward to to have you again here, or uh, uh, hopefully soon uh, meet again for drinks and dice uh, for yeah. a Yay. pint or coffee in person. That would be great. Thank okay. you. Yeah, awesome. Cheers. Cheers. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye.